Hello and welcome. Gravitational acceleration can be included in a static analysis. But it may be a bit confusing for new users since part should not move or accelerate in a static analysis. In this video, we will discuss different types of inertial loads like acceleration, rotational velocity, rotational acceleration and what inputs are needed for their definition in a static analysis. Ready? Let's get started. The material selection and definition of its properties is the first step of any finite element analysis. For a static structural analysis on the workbench project page, we have a default material of structural steel already defined under engineering data and it has the necessary material parameters defined for us to carry out the stress analysis. Additionally, we can also choose predefined materials from various libraries under the engineering data sources. We can add these materials to the project and then assign them to the appropriate parts in the mechanical interface. But what if we want to create our material? Do we need to define the value of every material parameter when creating any new material? Or is there a minimum set of material coefficients required to carry out a static structural analysis? For any new material, we need at least two material parameters, elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio to perform static structural analysis. The elastic or Young's modulus characterizes the stiffness of a material when a force is applied to it. It explains the relationship between stress and strain in the linear elastic region of a stress strain curve. The modulus of elasticity is the slope of stress versus strain. The second important material parameter is Poisson's ratio. It is a measure of the deformation of a material perpendicular to the loading direction. It can be defined as the ratio of transverse or lateral strain to the axial or longitudinal strain. With these two properties and geometry, we can fully describe the linear elastic behavior of any part. However, what if we want to also include inertial loads for our simulation? For example, gravity that affects the entire body based on the mass. In such cases, we also need to include density in the material definition. With density and having the geometry that provides the volume, we can derive the mass of the bodies for inertial loads. Here is a process to create a new material and add the material parameters. First, add the material in the list and then drag and drop the required parameters on the material and specify the values along with correct units. In terms of the inertial loads available for our simulation, ANSYS Mechanical provides several. Let us try to understand them one by one. The simplest one is the standard earth gravity. It is used to model the gravitational effect on a body in the form of a force or weight. Gravity is the specific example of acceleration with a fixed magnitude of 9.8 meters per second square and it causes the body to move in the direction of gravity. The next one is acceleration to define an arbitrary acceleration field for a structure. Think of being in a car that is undergoing constant acceleration and our frame of reference is moving with the car. Thus, for applied acceleration loads, a body tends to move in the direction opposite to the acceleration direction since we are in that moving reference frame. So we need to pay special attention to the direction. Thus, gravity and acceleration are essentially the same types of load except gravity has a fixed magnitude and the sign convention differs since gravity is in a stationary reference frame and acceleration is in a moving frame of reference. 
then we have rotational velocity for considering the structural effects of a part spinning at a constant rate. For rotational velocity defined in static structural analysis, the spin softening effect is automatically included in the rotating reference frame. For rotational velocity, the forces are generated along the radial direction. So the relative moment is in the radial direction for an axis symmetric structure. The rotational acceleration applies a constant rotational acceleration to the selected bodies. For the rotational acceleration, the forces are generated in the perpendicular direction to the radial direction and hence we see the relative moment in the circumferential direction. In a static analysis, using rotational velocity or rotational acceleration does not mean that we are calculating the actual rotation of the parts. Here we assume by default a rotating frame of reference. It is as if we are rotating with the structure. We can use a stationary frame of reference in rotor dynamics analysis, but it is outside the scope of this lesson. Let us try to understand how these terms differ in static versus dynamic analysis. First, let us see the governing equation of motion. In the static analysis, acceleration and velocity terms are zero as the loads and structural response don't change with time. So we only have kx equal to f where inertial loads are included in the f term. While the parts acceleration is zero, the structure may be in an acceleration field like gravity. So ma or more precisely mg equal to f is acting on the part and appears on the right side of the equation. Therefore, in a static analysis, inertial loads are treated as loading or part of f. In the static analysis, we will not calculate a part actually moving. In cases of acceleration, rotational velocity or rotational acceleration, we should know that we are interpreting the results in a moving frame of reference. Let us now consider dynamic analysis. In this case, the loads and structural response change with time. So the acceleration term is unknown and it is the second time derivative of DOF. Dynamic analysis are used to include and calculate this inertial effects, meaning that the contribution mx double dot is unknown and may change with time. Unlike inertial loads, we can't treat this term as known force. So that is why it remains on the left side of the equation and is calculated by the solver. We can think of this like a ball hitting a bat. The ball may start with a constant acceleration, but contact with the bat will change the magnitude and direction of the ball's acceleration, which needs to be computed by the solver. With this understanding, let us perform a simple static analysis. For this lesson, we have the geometry of a very simplified wind turbine blade to illustrate the concepts of inertial loads. We simplified the geometry for demonstration purposes as the actual assembly are more complex and can have dozens to hundreds of parts with contact. The wind turbine would be attached to a shaft which is not modeled here and a fixed support is applied to the wind turbine as an approximation. Then a rotational velocity of 1.5 radians per second is applied. We assume a rotating frame of reference when reviewing the results. Imagine that we are rotating with the turbine blade. So let's proceed with this example. First drag and drop static structural system on the project page. Then right click on the geometry cell, import geometry, browse and pick the file named rotor blade sc doc. Then double click on the model cell to open ANSYS mechanical. We will set the units to metric mm kg newtons for this simulation. If we expand the geometry, we can see the material for the blade is structural steel. 
we will keep it as is then go to coordinate systems right click insert coordinate system for this workshop a cylindrical coordinate system will be defined so that the axial circumferential and radial displacements can be reviewed after solving the case in details of coordinate systems change the type to cylindrical select the phase selection filter and select the end surface of the blade connecting to the shaft and click apply for the principal axis choose axis as z and define by global y axis now the cylindrical coordinate system is defined let us generate the mesh so for that click on mesh for the element size specify 50 mm under the mesh details now right click on mesh and generate mesh now we will set up the model with boundary conditions and inertial load first right click on static structural insert a fixed support pick the face selection filter and select the end surface of the blade click apply for the geometry scoping to define the fixed support right click on static structural again and insert the inertial load of rotational velocity now pick the body selection filter select all geometry and click apply then set the defined by to components and set 1.5 radians per seconds for the y component now we are ready to solve the model right click on solution and solve as the solution is done let's first check the stresses in the blade right click on the solution insert stresses equivalent evaluate the results to view the stresses that developed on the blade now let's check the displacement for that right click on solution insert directional deformation choose x axis here for the coordinate system choose the cylindrical coordinate system that was created earlier this will give us radial displacement repeat this for y and z direction to get circumferential and axial displacement respectively we can hold the shift button and select the x y and z directional deformations that we just inserted and then right click to rename based on definition this will make it easier to identify each result object right click and evaluate all results to view all directional deformations for a simple disk with rotational velocity we may expect uniform radial motion but deformation in this case is not purely radial since this is not an axis symmetric structure due to its geometric shape the blades bend circumferentially in the rotating frame of reference we also notice there is an out of plane deformation component too due to the shape of the blades so let's summarize the key learning points defining proper material properties is essential for carrying out a finite element analysis of which the bare minimum are elastic modulus and poisson's ratio but if inertial loads are taken into consideration the density also needs to be defined we discussed various inertial loads including standard earth gravity acceleration rotational velocity and rotational acceleration providing the foundation for our understanding of realistically representing inertial loads remember that some inertial loads may need to be interpreted in the context of a moving reference frame we also discuss how the equation of motion varies for static and dynamic analysis for static analysis we assume acceleration and velocity terms as zero so we are left with kx equal to f and the inertial loads are included in the f term for dynamic analysis acceleration is unknown and is defined as the second time derivative of dof i hope you found this video informative to understand the inertial loads don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses